Okay, again, so we were talking about differentials, and we saw that differentials rep represent tiny, very, very tiny quantities, we said. Uh, and we gave a couple of examples of how you could calculate derivatives that way. Um, I think if you give those two examples, right, we did um, the derivative of x squared, or we did der the derivative of the sine function. If you give that some thought and try it for other more complicated functions, you can see how really tedious that can be. So the limit definition of the derivative actually was pretty helpful. Okay, but anyway, so to kind of but to get back to our, our original discussion, so he, here's another example. We said that ratios of derivatives correctly represent, I'm sorry, ratios of differentials correctly represent derivatives, right? Well, another example of that okay, you remember this? Right, gang, that was the time rate of change of the position of an object. Remember, that was, oh my goodness, back, I think that was 3.6, uh, section 3.6 in our book, right? That's where we were talking about the position of an object moving in a straight line. What is its velocity? What is its acceleration? Uh, when is it moving left? When is it moving right? All that kind of stuff, right? So what you have over here is that's the derivative of the position function, and it's equal to velocity. But gang, if you think about, go all the way back to algebra, right, where we did the time distance problems. Remember this? Remember the distance equals rate times time problems? If I rearrange the factors here, okay, right? That's the, that's the distance over the time is equal to the rate. Well, we could be a little bit more sophisticated about it, right? Especially when those of you that have taken physics, I, you are more sophisticated about this. In physics, you would learn that this really, that's the change in the position, the change in the position of the function. That's the change in the time, and that's going to give you the velocity, or average velocity, we say, right? So you've got change in position, change in time. The ratio of those two is equal to this rate. We'll come back over here. Don't we have the same thing? Essentially the same thing, right? Look at this. You've got the ratio of two differentials, the differential of position, the differential of time, and that is the ratio of the two is equal to the instantaneous velocity, okay? So that's a, a nice little application of this concept of differentials that we were talking about in the previous video, right? Also, something else we can gather from this game. I'm gonna multiply both sides to clear the denominator, okay? So I, what I've done is, it's the same equation as it was, but it's a different in appearance, of course it is. But gang, it's equivalent. It's got the same information in it. It just conveys it in a different way. This says that the tiny amount of position, the differential of position, is equal to the velocity times the change in the time. Okay? So this amount is equal to this amount. Written another way. Like, we could write it this way as well. I mean, because after all, what is velocity but the derivative of position? We've, we've known this for a while now. So I've rewritten the original statement two different ways, okay? This one right here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to generalize this for all functions, though, okay? Let's say this. Okay, so this guy, all this is, this is just a generalization of this statement right here. This is our physics problem, position, velocity, change in time. This is just any generic function, okay? So this says the differential of a function is equal to its derivative times the differential dx, okay? So, uh, so some examples, right? So I want to apply this equation right here, and I want to apply it to the very specific function, the inverse tangent of x. Well, according to this, all I have to do is to find the derivative of the inverse tangent and then multiply it by dx itself. Okay. So the derivative of the inverse tangent function, 1 over 1 plus x squared, and then multiply that by dx. Okay. There's, if you like, you can divide out both sides by the dx. You can always do that. Right. This is the same as this. OK, 
okay? It means the same thing, okay? This, we say this is in the differential form, okay? So we can always do this kind of thing. And in fact, some of your homework problems ask you specifically, find the differential of a function, okay? Find the differential of a function. More often than not, gang, we'll see them used in a, in a slightly different way, and it'll become a little bit more important to us when we start working in um, near the end of our, our chapter four, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. First, just one more example similar to the one that we just did. Let's say that we wanted to find the differential of some function, um, let's say sine squared of x. I'll make it a little bit easier just to get through it. <laughs> okay, so according to what we established just a moment ago, the differential of the function e to the 4x is the derivative of e to the 4x times dx. Okay, and that's your answer. Okay, finding differentials of functions. More often than not, again, like I said, though, we're going to see them used in kind of a different context, especially near the end of the, of the chapter. Right? We'll see questions posed similar to this. The symbols are going to be slightly different. We'll see. But just to illustrate the point, okay? The question for us is this. The differential of what function is equal to the cosine of x dx? Right? So you have to ask yourself, the derivative of what function is the cosine? So what you're doing is you're working backwards, right? So all this time we've been taking derivatives, find the derivative of this function. Now you know what the derivative is. It's the co In this case, it's the cosine. What I'm asking you for is, what did it come from? What did you have to take the derivative of in order to get this cosine right here? What was it? Yes, the sine function. Good, gang, the sine function. Okay, in other words, the differential of the sine of x is the cosine of x times dx. Okay? Here's another one. Okay, now it's a little bit more of a challenge for us, right? This says the differential of some function, and we have to figure out what that is, okay? The differential of some function is equal to this quantity right here. What function can you think of? Now you have to work backwards, like I said. You have to, again, you gotta think about this. The derivative of what function leads to two times the sine times the cosine? What is that, right? So it's a challenge. And you might as well know it. We'll just get this out right now again. You can I could give you any function now, you can find the derivative of it. We know that all the derivative rules, we found the derivative of all the elementary functions and all their combinations. This there's, there's not a whole lot you can't take the derivative of anymore. In fact, it's for most of us, it's probably pretty routine by now. The hard part is, is when they actually give you the derivative and you have to come back to what the original function was, that's the challenge and that is not easy, okay? In fact, there's an entire chapter in your textbook devoted to techniques of this idea of going backwards, okay? Here's the derivative. What did it come from? Okay, now might give us might give us a challenge. Some of us might figure it out already. What it is, what it winds up being is this. Okay, now try that. Notice my result here is a composition gang. That means in order to take its derivative, I have to use the chain rule to do it. Now, does it work? Yeah, bring the two down in front, subtract one from it, and then the derivative of the inside function is equal to the cosine, okay? So, Sometimes it's, it's kind of obvious, right? Like this, the previous example. And other times, maybe not so, okay? But that's, that's another use of differentials we'll see when we get it. I think it's section 4.9 in your book, okay? So, but we'll see more of this. The, the, the symbols are slightly different. We'll see when the time comes. But otherwise, this process of going backwards, the differentials can be very, very useful for us, okay?